Hello and welcome to the glorious day in Cape Town all year. I'm struggling here, but I don't like presenting in my sunglasses, so I'm just gonna power through. But if you see me squinting, you know why. Well, welcome to it. This is the new Honda BRV. Now, me and the Honda BRV go way back because when COVID struck and the hard lockdown was announced, I had the BRV on test, the previous generation. And Honda very kindly allowed me to keep it for hard lockdown. I suppose I didn't really need it for anything. No one was going anywhere. And then we got the Kaza Koza show onto Ignition, the TV show, and I had to do a review. And so I reviewed the previous generation BRV in the basement of the building I was living in without actually leaving the basement. Scenes from which we will now cut to. Hello and welcome to a basement in Cape Town. But today, this is my crew. So there we go, that was the previous generation me and the previous generation BRV. Let's see what this new one has to offer. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Budget insurance. Affordable, because you can't afford not to. Right, let's start with the basics. What is under the bonnet and in the middle here of the car? 1.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol chowing engine mated to a CVT gearbox, continuously variable transmission. And the torque figure for me is the problem in this car. 145 newtons in a car this size, that's not a lot. Now, I must admit, the engine and the power and the drivetrain, it's all fine when you're sort of crawling around urban areas like this. It's even fine actually on the highway when you're sort of just alone or two up in the car as I am now. But let's not forget, this is a seven seater car. It's a family vehicle, which means you're going to load this car with lots of people and all of their things. And then maybe you're going to want to tow a small trailer or something because you've got seven people and they have lots of things. And then I think this car is going to struggle a bit. And then I think the CVT is going to drone. And then I think you're not going to have the most peasant driving experience. But most day-to-day -day situations, it's actually okay. The plus side though to this smaller engine without a turbo and with not huge power figures is that the car is quite efficient. So we're averaging around seven without even really trying seven to the hundred. You almost certainly get into the sixes and for a car this size, that is, that's pretty good. I think you'll be pretty happy with that sort of fuel consumption. So there's your upside. What I'm a little sad about with the BRV is it's not really an MPV anymore. And I think MPVs are actually super practical vehicles. If you look at something like the Rumion, if you look at something like the Ertiga, basically the same car, or even Honda's own Mobilio from a few years ago, those were very different offerings and they had one big plus point. And that plus point is size, interior space and practicality. Those MPVs, while they're not particularly pretty to look at, not the most attractive vehicles in the world, they are incredibly practical. But no one really likes MPVs in South Africa. I mean, they sell, but they're not the biggest sellers. Everyone wants an SUV. And so Honda have tried to marry seven seater MPV practicality with the appeal and the looks and the sort of stature of an SUV and the result is this and the result is that it's actually hard to find competitors to this new BRV. One of the reasons why it's so hard is because of the price because this car is about a hundred thousand rand more than the top spec Suzuki Ortega. It's about 80,000 rand more than the top spec Rumion. And so to differentiate the car from those competitors and to justify the price point, Honda have really thrown everything and the kitchen sink into this car when it comes to bells and whistles. 
So while you can get into a BRV for 379,000 Rand, a new one, the one I'm in is the top spec and it goes for 459,000 Rand. Now, as I mentioned, there's not too much to compare this to. Just above this is the Hyundai Creta, the Grand Creta seven seater, but I, uh, I don't really see them as rivals. That car's quite a bit smaller than this. This is a lot more practical. Wrapped up in that price point is a very decent warranty and service plan. So five year, 200,000 K warranty and a four year, 60,000 kilometers of service plan. I deal with a lot of numbers every day, every single day. And that is pretty good. I mean, you compare that to the Toyota's three year, it's a lot better. Although the Suzuki does offer a five year as well. So that's fairly comparative. But good cover in this BRV and there is definitely some value in that. And then just in terms of the overall feel of the car, the quality of the materials inside and particularly the refinement of the drive. Before I drove this car, my colleague Hannes Oesthuizen, who I respect very much in his opinion, gave me some feedback about his weekend in this car. And he said that he didn't find it very refined. He said that he found that it was a bit squeaky and he said that the bonnet was rattling at high speed. And I haven't encountered any of that. I've been out on the highway in it and there's nothing, everything feels fine. It's actually a pretty refined drive, to be honest. Um, not finding anything particularly wrong with the drive. I think in this segment, so to speak, it's the most refined car and the smoothest drive that, that you will get out of this segment. But um, I suppose Hannes and I are just going to have to disagree about that. Sorry, Hannes. But let's do a little experiment. Let's see if you're in a hurry how this car behaves. So we're waiting at the Red Robot. It's like a drag race in Century City. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Green. Hello. Hello. Why are we just standing here? There we go. Okay. There's 60. Then the revs drop off. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's not great, but I could live with it, I think. Welcome to the interior of the BRV. Now, as I mentioned, you're talking about quite an expensive car here, almost 100,000 Rand more than some of its rivals. However, it is much better spec. And I've made a list of the things that it has that none of its rivals have. And so that I don't forget anything, I'm going to read it off my phone. So you do get leather, although it is artificial leather, but it looks pretty good. Adaptive cruise control with lane center keep, six airbags instead of two which you get in most of its rivals power socket in the third row which is quite nice auto headlights with high beam assist that's quite cool technology full climate control keyless access blind spot warning lane keep assist and of course the cvt instead of the four speed auto now cvt is a bit more expensive technology and it's used because it is more efficient other than that though i do find the interior to be quite basic for instance this infotainment system looks pretty aftermarket these sort of covers down here not particularly attractive the steering wheel is a bit of a highlight for me with its contrast stitching and its leather finish and multi-function buttons as well. It's actually quite a nice steering wheel. However, a big omission for me is that it only adjusts for rake, where's the thingy, and not for reach. And I think that is quite a pity. I can't find an ideal driving position for myself in this car. I just find that I'm too far away from the steering wheel. So it, it feels relatively well put together. The quality of the materials, it's a bit of a sea of plastic, but in the right places, it's, it's the right stuff. Overall, it just feels like it's very much function over everything else really. The infotainment system is a bit limited. There's no Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, so you basically just have Bluetooth connectivity. And although the climate control is automatic, it's not dual zone, it's singular zone. One or two nice touches though, like in the, what is this thing called? A sun visor. <laughs> 
In the sun visor mirror flap thing, there's a light. My Lexus has that though, from the 90s. And you do get electric windows all round and electric mirrors, which fold in automatically when you lock the car. But an impressive feature which I do like is the blind spot camera. So when you indicate left or hit this little button on the end of the stalk, a camera in the mirror shows you your blind spot. And that is super useful when you're on the highway. This is a seven seater. So if we're going to do a thorough review of this car, I need to test all seven seats the middle row that's pretty good leg room that's my driving position um, not terribly tall so you might struggle to put two six foot adults behind each other but i think most adults would be relatively comfortable now the third row is accessible like this this flicks down and pops up justin will now do the same on his side there we go and in the interest of science i will try and fit in the back seat and answer the important question of can you fit adults or is it only good enough for kids? Okay, well, I'm in. I mean, I'm not sure I could do a thousand kilometers in this seat, but uh, short trips I would survive. I've got a drinks holder back here. I've got a power socket, curtain airbags. I do have my own seat belt. There's a proper seat belt for the middle passenger in front of me. Yeah, that's all right. Look, ideal for kids. But if you do need to squeeze some adults in here for a short trip, you will manage. The boot has many tricks up its sleeve, one of which is a false floor, which you can lower and raise. When it's in its low position, I have a feeling that it is going to pass the Casa Cosa highly scientific cooler box test. Yeah, that is inside the boot line. Look at that. So even with all seven seats in place, you can get some cooler boxes in the back. Then when you drop these two seats, you obviously get tons of space. So now you have five full seats and an enormous boot. The downside to this though, is that there is no parcel shelf to cover up whatever you have back here. Now, if you move this up into its top position, you do get a flat floor, which is quite nice. And if you're wondering where the spare wheel is, it's under the car. While I feel like this car is very practical and pretty well put together, reasonably refined on the road, maybe not the best drivetrain that you can find on the market, I'm not sure how much appeal it holds for the average motorist. If you hold practicality above everything else, then you could just save money and go for one of this car's more traditional rivals like an MPV from Toyota or Suzuki. But if you're looking for, say, a sort of status symbol in your car, then I think you could spend a little bit more and maybe get something from, and maybe something a little bit smaller from Volkswagen, for instance, or Renault, Opel, Peugeot, that sort of thing. And so that kind of leaves this car in a bit of a no man's land. If you just consider it totally on its own, in isolation, I don't think there's anything terribly wrong with this car, but, I'm not sure it holds enough appeal to sway South Africans into putting down their money. You know what this car is? It's like good Tupperware. Every home needs good Tupperware, but you don't necessarily go to a braai and brag about the awesome Tupperware you've just bought. Or maybe you do, I don't know, I don't know what sort of bras you go to. But at the end of the bri, you're really stoked when you got good Tupperware to take some choppies home in. That's the BRV. What this car is for me is functional transport. It doesn't have the appeal of some of its rivals or some of the cars which cost similar money. It is a mode of transport very practical, probably very reliable, very efficient. And if maybe your business is looking for something to get seven people from point A to point B, 
then I think this ticks a lot of boxes. But if you're looking for something a bit sexier, maybe launch your car. Thanks very much for watching. If you've just watched this video, but you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, you absolutely should do that immediately right now. Click the subscribe button. It's a good idea for a bunch of reasons, which I actually don't have really a lot of time to go into, but it's good. It's a good idea. Excellent. Thanks for watching. I said that already. Budget insurance. Affordable, because you can't afford not to. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza.